the G37 screen. This is what everyone's been talking about. This is the video that they wanted. It's finally here. It fits G25s, 35s, G37s, Q40s, and Q60s. Let's go ahead and check this out. See what's good. Woohoohoo! 14.4 inch screen. Holy moly. This is gonna go really well into the car and it's gonna be such a beautiful fit, man. There's all the wiring. We'll go through that shortly. I can't stress enough how important it is to follow your booklet. Um, Nifty City will send you this via email. I think it's downloadable at the checkout as well. Um, so for example, if your hedge unit is this, you need to follow this page and choose the correct connectors for your model. Um, otherwise your like reverse camera or AC or something won't work unless you follow the exact connectors that you need to use. Um, so I can't stress it enough. Use your booklet, follow it, and you'll have a pleasant installation. Let's go ahead and get this installed in a Skyline today. Uh, we are not installing it in a G37, but the Skyline has the exact same dashboard and all the same stuff as a G37. So let's go ahead and get this smacked into the car today. Okay, so we'll be installing on a Skyline 370GT, similar to the G37s. This is what the dashboard looks like. If your dashboard looks exactly like this, then this Nifty City Tesla screen will be suitable for your vehicle. Let's go ahead and get installed. I'll go ahead and show you how to remove the trims of this type of dashboard and get this Nifty City Tesla style screen installed in it. The first thing you're going to do is remove the gear knob shifter. Go ahead and drop this part. Remove the pin outwards towards you and then slide the gear knob shifter upwards and there you have it, you've removed that one. If your Skyline or Infinity G series is newer than 2010, you will need to remove this piece. If it's newer than 2010, you do need to remove the piece here first, then remove this piece after removing the two screws. If it is newer than 2010, please refer to one of our other videos where we work on a newer Skyline version to show you how to remove the dash trims of the newer models. Once you've removed this with clips, you can go ahead and go to the next step. Once you've removed the trim, go ahead and remove the one clip just behind this piece. Once you've removed this dash piece, you'll go ahead and remove two connectors that's connected to this piece. Go ahead and remove these two screws in order to remove this dash piece right here. Once you've removed the two screws here, you can go ahead and pry this piece out very easily. And then once you've removed this piece, there are three connectors behind this dash piece. Okay, we then want to remove the two screws just beneath the keypad trim. So go ahead and remove those two, and then you can very easily pry out the screen trim. Go ahead and pry this out very easily, just like that. No connectors behind the screen trim. Once you've removed the screen trim, go ahead and remove the two screws attaching the screen and the hedge unit together. There's one, two, and then beneath the hedge unit, there's another two, one and two, and then slowly remove the hedge unit and the screen. There are many connectors between both. Go ahead and remove both. There we go, we've removed the factory screen. Now we need to remove the factory hedge unit. This AC box, this white box here, you need to leave behind the dashboard. We still need that. Leave it connected, disconnect it from the hedge unit and leave it behind the dashboard. When disconnecting the white AC box from the factory head unit. Be careful, there might be a Phillips screw or a Torx screw. This one is a Torx, so I'm gonna use a Torx to disconnect the white AC box from the factory head unit. We are working with a Japanese model head unit, so the connectors will look a little different. Refer to your booklet to see which connectors you need to use that come from this head unit. Hide the white AC box somewhere behind the dashboard where it's out of the way when putting the screen onto this dash. These two connectors are for your hazard lights and for your airbags. Connect those to the new adapter provided in the Nifty City kit. This this connector will be useful later. Keep that aside. You'll need to connect the factory reverse camera harness from the Nifty City kit in order to bring the factory reverse camera onto the Nifty City screen. Gather all your connectors, get them ready. The best way to go about this is to find your connectors, hook them up with the factory connectors, and then hook the connectors up to the Tesla star screen, then mount the Tesla star screen. So we'll go through all these. All of these are also in your booklet, so please refer to your booklet and the type of head unit you have to make sure you're using the correct connector. This is an audio decoder, so this is for your factory Bose. This is for aftermarket and factory reverse cameras. This will work alongside this adapter, which will connect your factory reverse camera. This is your hazard light and your airbag connector. This is the main harness. Remember only to use the connectors that are involved with your head unit. These are extra connectors for specific head unit models. Do not use these unless it's stated in the booklet. This is for specific models like Australian models and Japanese models. USB cords. This is to connect to the Tesla screen and then for optional charging. And then we have the GPS which connects to the Tesla style screen. This is the cord that confuses everyone. This harness over here connects to your airbag connector. Okay, and then this connects to the bottom of the Nifty City Tesla style screen. Remember to move the AC vents from your factory screen trim over to the Tesla style screen. The AC vents are simply just on clips, so just side to side and you can easily crack them off and move them over to the Nifty City Tesla style screen. You don't need to remove any screws here. 
Okay, so we're using the appropriate wires for this type of hedge unit. Test everything. Test the reverse camera. Test the AC, test the hazard lights, test the audio, test CarPlay, test everything before you commit to mounting this screen on the dashboard. Once mounted, test everything again. Make sure you haven't uh, disconnected any wires. Once you're all happy with it, you can go ahead and put the two screws here and put all the dash trims back together. Let's go ahead and start playing around with the screen. Absolute sexy fitment in the Skyline slash G37 slash all types of Infinity G series. It's so beautiful. CarPlay on the 14.4 inch screen is insane. It's got everything working. I'm not gonna play too much audio, guys. Uh, look, copyright reasons. Uh, but here we go, the AC is working, everything is fantastic. Got all the apps, Netflix, YouTube, everything's going well. We've got the ambient light set up here. This is like an app to change the lights just uh, here. Uh, we've got Bluetooth, this is where you initially pair your phone. Uh, the cam app where you can see the reverse camera without needing to uh, go to switch the sh gear knob shifter into reverse so you can see the reverse camera there car settings you never have to play with any settings you just need to make sure your connectors are correct i really hope my video was helpful today i appreciate all the support you guys have given this channel and my videos thanks so much for all the feedback i hope this installation video was helpful if you need one of these screens for your infinity g 25 35 37 q40 q60 or skyline please go ahead and go to www.niftycity.shop and you'll find a screen for that car or you can go ahead and find the screen for many other cars, makes, models, and years. Don't forget to comment, ask any questions down in the video below, or contact Nifty City directly. We will keep producing content like this for you guys, as long as you keep supporting us. We'll keep pumping out these videos for you. You take care now and enjoy your new drives with this screen.